I love all the tangents we took, but let's return to the beginning. Mm -hmm. What's the uh, origin story of Perplexity? Yeah, so, you know, I got together with my co-founders, Dennis and Johnny, and all we wanted to do was build cool products with LLMs. Um, it was a time when it wasn't clear where the value would be created. Is it in the model? Or is it in the product? But one thing was clear. These generative models that transcended from just being research projects to actual user-facing applications. Uh, GitHub Copilot was being used by a lot of people and I was using it myself and I saw a lot of people around me using it. Andre Karpati was using it. People were paying for it. So this was a moment unlike any other moment before where uh, people were having AI companies where they, they would just keep collecting a lot of data but then it would be a small part of something bigger. But for the first time, AI itself was the thing. So to you, that was an inspiration, Copilot as a product. Yeah. So GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot. Yeah. for people who don't know, it's assists you in, in programming. Yeah. It generates code for you. Yeah. And I mean, you, you can just call it a fancy autocomplete, it's fine, yep. <laughs> except it actually worked at yes. a deeper level than before. Yeah. And one property I wanted for a company I started was it has to be AI complete. This was something I took from Larry Page, which is you want to identify a problem where if you worked on it, you would benefit from the advances made in AI. The product would get better. Yeah. And because the product gets better, more people use it. And therefore that helps you to create more data for the AI to get better. And that makes the product better. That creates the flywheel. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to uh, have this property for most companies don't have this property. That's why they're all struggling to identify where they can use AI. It should be obvious where you should be able to use AI. And there are two products that I feel truly nail this. One is Google search, where an improvement in AI, semantic understanding, natural language processing, improves the product and, and like more data makes the embeddings better, things like that, or self-driving cars where more and more people drive, it's better more data for you, and that makes the models better, the vision systems better, the behavior cloning better. You're talking about self-driving cars, like the Tesla approach. Anything, Waymo, Tesla, doesn't matter. So anything that's doing the explicit uh, collection of data. Correct. Yeah. And, and um, I always wanted my startup also to be of this nature, where, yeah. but you know, it wasn't designed to work on, um, consumer search itself, you know, we, we started off as like searching over the first idea I pitched to uh, the first investor who decided to fund us, Elad Gill. Hey, you know, would love to disrupt Google, but I don't know how, but one, one thing I've been thinking is if people stop typing into the search bar and instead just ask what, what about whatever they see visually mm -hmm. through a glass. Mm -hmm. I, I always liked the Google Glass vision. It was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And you just said, hey, look, focus. You know, you're know, you not going to be able to do this without a lot of money and a lot of people. Identify a wedge right now and create something. And then you can work towards the grander vision, mm -hmm. which is very good advice. And that's when we decided, okay, how would it look like if we disrupted or created search experiences over things you couldn't search before? And we said, okay, tables, relational databases. Mm -hmm. You couldn't search over them before, but now you can because you can have a model that looks at your question, translates it, translates it to some SQL query, runs it against the database. You keep scraping it so that the database is up to date. Yeah, and you execute the query, pull up the records and give you the answer. So just to clarify, you you couldn't query it before. You couldn't ask questions like, who is Lex Friedman following that Elon Musk is also following? So that's for the relation database behind Twitter, for example. Correct. So you, you can't ask natural language questions of a table. You ha Correct. have to come up with complicated SQL. Yeah, queries. or like, like, you know, most recent tweets that were liked by both Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Okay. You couldn't ask these questions before. 
because you needed an AI to like understand this at a semantic level, convert that into a structured query language, execute it against a database, pull up the records and render it, right? Mm -hmm. But it was suddenly possible with advances like GitHub Copilot. You had code language models that were good. And so we decided we would identify this inside and like go against search over like scrape a lot of data, put it into tables uh, and ask questions. By generating SQL queries. Correct. The reason we picked SQL was because we felt like the output entropy is lower. It's templatized. Mm -hmm. There's only a few set of select, you know, statements, count, all these things. And uh, that way you don't have as much entropy as in like generic Python code. But that insight turned out to be wrong, by the way. Interesting. I'm actually now curious but wait, both directions, remember like that, how well does it work? Remember that this was 2022, mm -hmm. before even you had 3.5 turbo. Codex, right. Correct. Separate, it trained on a, yeah. they're not general. Just they're trained, trained on, on GitHub and yep, some natural yep, language. Yep. So you're, it's, it's almost right. like you should consider it was like programming with computers that had like very little RAM. Yeah. So a lot of hard coding. Like my co-founders and I would just write a lot of templates ourselves for like this query, this is a SQL, this query, this is a SQL. We would learn SQL ourselves. This is also why we built this generic question answering bot because we didn't know SQL that well ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then we would do RAG. Given the query, we would pull up templates that were, you know, similar looking template queries. Mm -hmm. And the system would see that build a dynamic few shot prompt and write a new query for the query you asked and execute it against the database. Mm -hmm. And many things would still go wrong. Like sometimes the SQL would be erroneous. You have to catch errors. You have to do like retries. Mm -hmm. So we built all this into uh, a good search experience over Twitter, which we scraped with academic accounts this was before Elon took over Twitter. So we, you know, back then Twitter would allow you to create academic API accounts, mm -hmm. and we would create like lots of them with like generating phone numbers, get, like writing research proposals with GPT. <laughs> and like, nice. I would call my projects as like Bryn Rank and all these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like uh, create all these like fake academic accounts, collect a lot of tweets and like, basically Twitter is a gigantic social graph, mm -hmm. but we decided to focus it on interesting individuals because the value of the graph is still like, you know, pretty sparse, mm -hmm. concentrated. And then we built this demo where you can ask all these sort of questions, stop like tweets about AI, uh, who, like like if I wanted to get connected to someone, like I'm identifying a mutual follower. Mm -hmm. uh, and we demoed it to like a bunch of uh, people like Jan LeCon, Jeff Dean, Andre, um, and they all liked it because people like searching about like what's going around about mm -hmm. them, about people they are interested in. Fundamental human curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. And that ended up helping us to recruit good people because nobody took me or my co-founders that seriously, but because we were backed by interesting individuals, uh, at least they were willing to like listen to like a recruiting pitch.